Hey everyone, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Sonia Wilkins and I'm going to potentially be your pottery teacher, your ceramics teacher for this course if you so wish to enrol. And I thought what better way than to show you what I'm about and what I've achieved than show you a timeline of my ceramics right from being a child through to the present day. So I went into my studio and I went right up high to the top shelf and found a dusty little ceramic cat that I made, it's just here, when I was at school. So I was very lucky um, to be at a school in Bristol in the UK um, where they had ceramic facilities and in the junior school I was probably about 12 when I first started making ceramics. I was very lucky to have a really inspiring teacher. But what I wanted to show you about this is this little cat <laughs> who's got a great little character. It might not be the most brilliant example of ceramics, but I hold it now and I know this cat. I know this piece of work. And this is what is so special about ceramics, that when it is handmade, you know the material, you know the shape and the form, you remember making it and it brings back those memories. And it makes me smile because this little cat was dusty and I haven't touched it for years. I'm bringing it here to you today. I've touched it and it's brought back all those memories of sitting with my school friends, laughing in art class and having a wonderful time. And that's how I was inspired um, and how really the seed of working with clay and ceramics and pottery was planted for me. So yes, you too can make wonderfully beautiful handmade products that bring you much more than just what this is, but memories and almost a therapy, because for me, clay and the tactile nature of clay is almost like a meditation process. It takes me away from my busy world. I know Pablo Picasso once said, art washes away the dust from everyday life. And I just think that is so wonderful, that quote, because that is what ceramics does for me. I have to focus on what I'm doing. And then that means that all my busyness in my mind just drops away. and it is like being in a meditation. It's really wonderful. So that was the first start for me with my little cat. And then I decided to leave school at 18 and do an art foundation course, which is the first year in a degree, art degree, and you try a little bit of everything. Now, fortunately, I love painting, I love fashion, I love graphic design, I love ceramics. Um, so it was a bit difficult to decide, but because I knew ceramics and probably because I knew it by touching it and feeling it and creating in 3D, I just went with ceramics. I thought, what am I going to do? I want to do it all, but I have to specialise. So I specialised in ceramics and did a three-year degree um, in ceramics with some amazing tutors. I was so fortunate in Bristol to be taught by Mo Jupp, whose work is in the V&A in London. He, he sadly isn't alive anymore. He passed away a few years ago, um, but a very famous potter. And also Walter Keeler, who exhibits his work in the southwest of England and also Nick Homerke. So I had three fantastic potters. So in that course, I went on to do year one and year two, which was all about experimenting techniques. And we were often um, given projects. And one of the first projects I did was we had to design a, um, a, a piece of ceramics to go in a room and we had to find a picture, an interior style in a magazine. And I chose Art Deco. So I had to produce a piece of ceramics in Art Deco style that would go in this room. And this is what I produced. So this is an Art Deco light, a wall light, so room for a bulb to go inside and a hole at the back for the light bulb to go through and the electrics. And so this piece would be mounted on a wall. And I was very pleased to get a first for this um, first project of mine. Um, so this is involving hand building, rolling out clay, which I'll be showing you in this course if you wish to join. Um, so yeah, I found that went really well. And then we went on to learn how to throw on the potter's wheel and we had a really excellent tutor that showed us how to do that. And I produced things such as this teapot where you learn how to produce the lids that fit and throw handles and spouts. 
and yes, uh, we did lots of very difficult things as well and learning about glazing and all of the different techniques and there's so many wonderful things you can do in ceramics. I also got inspired in my second year by a potter called Ewan Henderson and he was inspired by landscape and I loved this kind of combination of throwing on the potter's wheel, having layers of rustic kind of clays that uh, showed the landscape um, you know, of, of an environment you may visit um, either desert or uh, countryside or mountains or seascapes. So these different oxides and colours and I would put um, even little pebbles in the clay as well. So I really loved this idea of um, smooth and rough, of free and controlled. And actually my thesis was on just that, um, how we can actually bring that freedom into our work through losing control. Because I'm naturally a um, very neat person and so I always really aspired to be much more rustic and organic with my work. So for me, that was a real tug of war. So I wrote my thesis on that and how we can use techniques to really kind of um, get that flow and spontaneity by even either kind of drawing, for example, blindfold or drawing um, with a stick uh, and a pencil glued onto the end of the stick. So you lose some of that control and you can do things in ceramics and certainly throwing on the potter's wheel, you do lose a bit of that control as well. So I went on finally to do my third year in ceramics, um, taking on the ideas from Ewan Henderson and landscape and producing a series of tableware and spice pots like this one, which is combined using the potter's wheel, throwing, using this kind of vortex shape, this twist, and then hand building with textures and layers to create these lovely spice pots. And I did some very large vessels as well. So you can see how I kind of have an ability to throw and hand build and coil in lots of different ways and I've made some really huge vessels as well in my time. Um, so yes I really enjoy all of the different techniques and this is an example down here I'm going to have to pick it up of one of my other pieces in my degree an experimental piece combining the idea of line um, thrown again and then hand built and this is a reduction fire piece in a gas kiln producing this deep ruby red glaze um, but again this kind of seascape um, kind of frothing going on here so yes you know you can see I, I get inspired by nature even at this point and um, yeah lots of different forms and I, I just love experimenting it's just so fantastic so today, um, basically what happened, I, I qualified in my degree and then went on to sell some work in galleries in Bristol in the UK. And then I had a career in people development. So you'll find that I'm actually on Udemy um, as a crystal therapist as well and Reiki therapist. Um, so I have an, another kind of interest in people and uh, personality and healing. And this is what's so wonderful because my healing has actually come through into my art, my ceramics as well. So nature is healing as we all know, leaves and nature and walking in nature and grounding ourselves with the earth and gardening. Well, my father is an avid gardener, so he has helped me learn about leaves and the names of leaves so I can then use them to inform my ceramics work. So I collect leaves in local arboretums in the UK and I press the leaves into clay to leave these beautiful impressions of the, the vein structure. And I also use my Reiki to impregnate the clay when I make my pieces. So my pieces, I hope, my wish is that people find them beautiful to look at. And it reminds people of how lucky we are to have the beautiful planet we live on. And also people gain from using the functional pieces that I make, the platters and plates and vases, um, particularly if they eat off of those plates, they gain from the healing quality that I put into the pieces when I make them. So my healing side um, and crystal therapy as well, um, it, what's so interesting is when I was a young child, before I did ceramics, I used to find fossils with my father. I used to go to the beaches and find fossils. And later on, I suddenly realised, well, fossils are made of the same thing that clay is made of. And actually, the same things that is in clay is also in crystals. And I'm now a crystal therapist as well. And, you know, all of these elements, these atoms and molecules, feldspar, dolomite, china clay, all of these things are in crystals and they're in the earth and they're in clay and they're in nature. So it's all connected and, and as we know it's, it's all one. So it's really wonderful to um, be able to create these pieces bringing my healing and art um, into both. So I'd like to show you a few pieces that I now currently make using nature, so ceramics inspired by nature. 
So I very often use Fatsia japonica leaves, which are lovely big leaves. I have a tree in my garden to make these um, lovely fruit bowls, which are ed edged with platinum. And obviously you can see the vein structure in there. Um, I make lots of different varieties, lots of different glazes, and I, I fire at different temperatures. This is a green version. Um, and then I also fire using gold luster as well. So this is a white version with gold luster and gold edging. And I make leaf coasters, um, pressing leaves in, I make vases, I make porcelain hanging planters. I've actually started to make um, vases as well using skeleton leaves. And there's one just down here I want to show you. So this is my kind of top line bespoke pieces. So this piece is thrown on the potter's wheel. Um, you can see similar to my degree work there, the uh, spirals. So I'm still influenced by what I've learned in the past. And then I've pressed in some skeleton leaves and then I've painted with oxide and also gold and platinum luster with these lovely peony flowers and the leaves and these are glazes here so this lovely layering so you can see the influence again from my degree and um, Ewan Henderson and all those layers of different clays and oxides and glazes so hopefully you can see um, where how I'm inspired I also make jewelry so I'm wearing a little maple leaf pendant here and there's one in the back here on the mannequin a ginkgo leaf so this is me this is me and I just love pottery I love clay it's so close to my heart I have taught pottery as well so in a you know life is funny isn't it but when um, my children were at school age we needed to move them to a different school and um, I took them back to Clifton High School because it had become a mixed school for boys and girls. I've got a son and a daughter. And they ended up um, enrolling at the school and being there as students. And the headmistress at that time, of course, everything had moved on and I was there as a pupil. But my tutor when I was there was the headmistress that was there for my own children. So she approached me and she said, oh, Sonia, it's so wonderful to have you back and have your children here now. Would you teach for us? Would you become the ceramic specialist? So I was brought in as the art technician and ceramic specialist to run clubs for the children, junior children and senior pupils as well. And that was really wonderful. And I just remember walking into the studio, which needed a little bit of a, a tidy up. Um, and I was rustling through the boxes and I found some photographs of me with my little cat and some of my pots, which was just, just wonderful. That synchronicity in life sometimes is amazing. And uh, also I, I opened a bag of clay and I'd had a break from uh, clay because I was doing my people development, my, um, my other role in my career. Um, and then while I, I started a family. So I hadn't touched clay for years and I opened up the bag and I touched clay. And I know this is gonna sound a bit, um, a bit silly, but I, I opened the bag, I touched it and I thought, oh, I've come home again. This is like a real friend. Why haven't I done this for so long? And that was what my heart said. And it was just really wonderful. And I thought, yeah, this is what I need to be doing now. So I taught there for three years and loved doing it. But I very soon realized that I, I loved the clay so much that I wanted to become a professional potter. I wanted to make my own collections of work and sell my work. So that is what I do now. And I do pottery tuition for a few people, but my real heart is in producing these pieces using nature as the inspiration. And this year, um, I was very fortunate in getting a commission from uh, executive head chef Niall Keating at Watley Manor in the UK and he was on the Great British Menu, a TV programme on BBC Two in the UK and I was asked to make some unique pond lily, lily leaf dishes for his dessert course and he was producing chocolate frogs um, as part of the Harry Potter theme. So these are the pond lily dishes and I was able to use real pond lily leaves from Bristol Botanical Garden, who I've got a really good relationship with, and press those leaves into the clay and produce these lovely dishes which were on television. So it was really, really wonderful to do that and for me to see my work on national television. So that was a real highlight for me in my career. So I do hope that's given you a flavour of where my work is, how my work has evolved and where my inspiration and my love of clay comes from. And what I'm going to be offering you in this course 
is to be able to produce your own leaf platter from scratch. So I'm going to teach you a bit about clay, what it is, the techniques and how to glaze and decorate, but essentially you are going to be able to make an equivalent to this burdock leaf sharing platter which I've made using a real burdock leaf and then attaching a lovely twisted vine handle so that you can then um, display your cheese and bread or your, um, your lovely food that you might want to share with your loved one or at dinner parties. So this is what this course is going to be about. It's going to be about you finding, foraging a large leaf which has got a really good vein structure and then I'm going to show you step by step how to produce this. So I do hope you join me. I will really look forward to sharing these wonderful, wonderful skills with you.